think uh, we are. We had a great equity council meeting um, the uh, last week, which I thought was really well done. Thank you very much, Sue, for getting it to get getting us all together again. It was really dynamic. It was a Zoom. We broke out into smaller groups. We came back together. Um, it was really effective, and it it got a lot of conversation that we need. You know, keep keep the motion going, and um, work on making sure that we touch all marginalized groups and we have good programs in the fall to keep the kids invested in the in the in the equity council group work. That's about it. Thanks. Uh, Lydia. Yeah, it's just uh, it's been a busy few weeks because we've had a lot of webinars from um, CABE and CREC and uh, National School Board Association. And we also had uh, um, we also had two Zoom meetings with uh, with Commissioner, and we also have on um, we have on the uh, the K board that every single week, and it's really grown because it's interesting to hear what other districts are doing in terms of their models, in terms of summer school, in terms of reopening, in terms of uh, equity for students. And I just uh, was on recently on uh, Massachusetts uh, school board committee had uh, on. Um, a Zoom meeting, and uh, we had probably about 200 people on about developmental trauma that's affecting our students as we speak now and going through summer and what the pandemic is, uh, is uh, how it is, is affecting the students. So that's what's going on at the moment. Um, we've heard a lot about graduations in different communities, um, and basically everyone is in the same boat. We also had a um, another discussion about uh, the RATS, the regional advisory teams that the governor had appointed and uh, one RESC member is on those teams. And we had that discussion that coming even from the RATS and, and uh, coming from some of the governor's teams, the advisory teams, even one layer above that, that it's very difficult and frustrating because there really is no clear direction of where we're going and how we're maintaining um, the you know summer school programs and the opening of school. So with without having mandates come set forward to individual districts or districts as a whole. So more on this, um, June 20 is really around the corner. So they'll be having more meetings before that. So hopefully the next few weeks we'll be able to hear, you know, what will be forthcoming. Thanks Lydia. Uh, Todd, do you have anything tonight? Nothing tonight. Okay, thanks. Um, Mr. Sullivan. Yeah, just wanted to let everybody know that the second meeting of our return to Simsbury Schools Task Force, which is the group uh, tasked with exactly what Lydia was just talking about, the planning and logistics about what a return to school would look like. Um, a little bit about summer school, but more of a concentration on um, imagining a new future in August. Um, is 10 o'clock tomorrow morning with a Zoom meeting, and this involves um, department leaders in maintenance and health services and uh, security and J.R. Salter from transportation and trying to figure out all those messy details. So um, we'll be meeting every two weeks um, until 4th of July uh, week at weekend, and then it'll become a weekly meeting for the rest of the summer as we ramp up with our plans. So second meeting is tomorrow morning at 10. Great, thank you very much. Uh, Aaron. Okay, I wanted to give a quick update on some of our summer uh, school planning as we're moving forward. Uh, what we're putting together for our K-6 students is uh, 10 reading, writing, and math opportunities that will be on the district webpage, optional opportunities for all grade levels that will be on the, the website. We will also in the elementary school be doing the remedial or intervention um, reading and math program for students that were identified bar back in March, right before we left, and um, pulling kids together this summer, which will be virtual. Um, experience for those students. Um, and likewise, there'll be a virtual writing enrichment academy for students. Um, and that will be uh, held and um, designed through, um, through Betsy Gonzalez and her team, but um, hosted by the Department of Continuing Education. 
Um, likewise, for 712, we will have the typical um, reading summer packets for students, um, 7 through 11, I should say. Um, likewise, the math um, packets that they will take home um, as well, um, that will be all given to them through the virtual uh, methods right now. Um, we will also be doing the virtual uh, PE wellness for 10, grades 10 and 11, as well as the virtual uh, personal finance course this summer. And I think Sue's going to talk a little bit more about extended school year for the special education population. Can I ask one question, Erin? Um, Sue to Erin? Um, my question would be, are we going to be mailing any of those packets to anybody? Because there are a lot of homes that don't have printers anymore. I think what we'll be doing is a pickup opportunity as well. That's a great idea. Um, all right, and Mrs. Lemke. Great seg segue, Erin, thank you. Uh, so certainly I am looking at a different slice of that summer programming through our students with special needs and extended school year. So very late last week, we received some guidance from the Bureau of Special Education regarding how we make those decisions, what data we use. But with that also came some pretty um, interesting stipulations regarding health and safety. And if we were to consider any face-to-face -face programming, what kind of measures and markers we would have to make sure we're in place before we can even consider that opportunity. So um, certainly I shared with the board prior that we are going to be looking at a hybrid model that by and large, most extended school year services will be offered through a distance platform. Yet for those students with whom it makes the most sense to do some face-to-face -face kind of interactions, we'll be looking at how to best meet those stipulations and optimize uh, those opportunities for that unique population. Great, thank you very much. Uh, Amy, do you have anything for us tonight? Nope, nothing to share, thanks. Okay, Mr. Curtis. Yeah, I would just add one piece on to um, Sue's information. In our planning, I think as well, obviously, as the, the services we're providing the, the students, it will, it will help us logistically um, from a planning standpoint, from a safety and security standpoint. Uh, as we prepare for the fall to offer some level of in-person programming this summer. Um, because there's so many details when you get into the logistics and the requirements uh, that are being passed down uh, from the state to the districts, um, rather than just move kind of cold into that in, in the fall. So I think it, it certainly serves a variety of, uh, of purposes. Uh, and I would also just you know, say in the spirit of planning and the work that, that needs to be done, I, I'm, I'm not looking to put more meetings on people's plates, but I know at our next board uh, meeting, we have up for the discussion what we normally do with our summer meeting schedule. And I would just plant the seed uh, with board members and my staff this evening that um, I would suggest we keep those meetings on the calendar. And if we need to cancel one, that's fine, but it's easier to do that than to plan special meetings because I do believe moving forward, uh, our communication mechanism back to the board is going to be about the work of these two committees, the teaching and learning committee and the operations committee. And there will certainly be a lot to vet uh, with the board as we create that kind of wheel of communication from our administration to the board and then back out uh, to the public. So that's just a thought as we get uh, ready to move forward. And, my last thought is I cannot believe it's, I looked at the calendar and it's, it's three weeks till we, we close the school year. And I just wanna thank everybody for their continued efforts. I know there is increased stress in, in students and in staff and parents and fatigue as well. And, um, you know, it just urge people to continue to move forward that, that everybody's doing a great job. Um, and we'll get to the finish line this, this year, but it's been quite an effort by everybody. So I'd just like to add to that. I think um, from a board perspective, we have all been awed by the amount of work you all have managed to get done so quickly under such crazy conditions. And we've all talked about it in different partnerships and different conversations and through different meetings. But please know that all of us support you 
and the work you're doing. And thank you for representing this district so very well with all the challenges you've had. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to add anything to that before we move on. I'm happy to open the floor if any other board member wants to pipe in. But um, just, Susan, I just well have said. one one little story I wanted to, to throw in there, a good spirited story. Obviously, I get the chance to talk to a lot of parents uh, and we've gotten great feedback on distance learning in terms of adjustments and we've gotten great feedback from staff as well. Had a wonderful conversation with a gentleman last week who's got a, a son that's a, a kindergartner and a a daughter that's in, in fifth grade and he's explaining to me how independently she works on this model. And as he's trying to talk about the challenges of the kindergartner, I hear the screaming and yelling in the background because rather than watch the little video he's supposed to watch, he's chasing flies around the house. And the, and the father was talking to me about, see Matt, this is why we need to get back in the fall and, and figure this out. So, um, you, you know, it's, 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 it's been interesting to hear people's experiences and and recognize how important the school communities are to their ability to function in their own, you know, work and home lives, so. I really thank you for all of that you've done. I mean, it's just amazing to me where we are today and where we were just three months ago. It's 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 mind blowing with what, what you've gotten done and how you're trying to react to these, each individual phone call that comes through and each individual problem that arises. Um, I've heard great stories from people that, oh, I called and they answered and they helped and, um, and that's at, at every level. They talk to teachers and to um, you guys all the time. And I really appreciate that you're available and you have the open community philosophy. It's been great. Jeff, you were going to say something. Uh, no, I was to say just well said after Susan jumped in. So now I just appreciate everything you guys have done. It's It has been really phenomenal where we've uh, just come over the last couple of months. So just thank you. All right, so now we can move on to recommended actions. So uh, first up is the approval of the minutes of May 12th, 2020, our regular meeting. Can I get a motion on that? I'll make a motion. A second. Okay. Um, any corrections, discussion, changes? Seeing none, uh, can uh, everyone in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Uh, approval of the May 12, 2020 special meeting minutes. I'll make a motion. I'll second. I'll second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, personnel. Yeah, just one item uh, today. Unfortunately, it is a resignation of our math department supervisor at Henry James. Uh, Melissa Luke came to us um, from the East Hartford School District just uh, two years ago um, and did a great job in a, in a short time um, and was recognized, as often happens to us, by another district for her leadership. Um, so congratulations to Melissa for uh, getting her first building leadership job. She's gonna be an assistant principal in Vernon. Um, so we congratulate uh, Melissa. Uh, and I can tell you that our uh, process to find her successor is well underway with um, interviews Zoomed earlier today. So um, congratulations to Melissa and, and we'll be updating you as, as we um, search for a new math department supervisor. Okay. Uh, can I get a motion here? I will. I move that we, um, that the Board of Education accept the resignation of Melissa Luke, effective June 30th of 2020. Second? I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Um, adoption of fee schedule for the use of public schools. Yes, I'll, I'll take this one, Susan. So we discussed this at our last board meeting. It's essentially the fee schedule uh, for use of our buildings. And by and large, it covers the cost of uh, custodial overtime, primarily for uh, weekend usage of the building. So uh, we went with a 2% increase 
uh, to keep up with uh, salary increases and the like, uh, which was consistent with other districts when the business office reached out and um, kind of garnered some feedback as to what others were doing. Um, can I get a motion on this, please? I'll move, move that. that uh, I'll move that the fee schedule move. for the use of public schools for 2020-21 be approved as submitted by the administration. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much. And uh, review and approval of the 21-22 school calendar. So we're always a year ahead in approving the school calendar. So the 2020 21 is already posted to the website after you approved it last year. This would be the 2122 calendar. Um, and we follow the guidelines set out by Tara's favorite historical committee when uh, she was tasked with a group to figure out some rules around the school calendar. And we've been following them ever since. So um, it's quite an interesting school calendar in that how early it starts because the, the, uh, rules call for starting on the last Wednesday in August, and that's the earliest possible date in 2021, August 25th. So as a result, you get the, the three days of school in and then another full week before Labor Day. And then Labor Day weekend is actually a four-day weekend because Rosh Hashanah falls the day after Labor Day. So... Um, uh, and then just to run through the other typical uh, things that uh, do mark days off, um, Yom Kippur is also a weekday in this particular year. It's about a week and a half later on September 16th. Of course, um, Columbus Day on October 11th and our typical uh, election day where we run professional development, but it's not a day for students on the first Tuesday in November. Um, Thanksgiving is typical. And then in December, the board will note that um, it was quite popular a few years ago that any time now that December 23rd is the last day of school, we now run it as a half day. So we have, once again, this calendar reflects December 23rd as a half day. Uh, and then I would note through the rest of the year, nothing else that is um, out of the ordinary, Martin Luther King Day, uh, President's Day plus one more day, um, the typical April vacation for one week, and then Memorial Day. I will, as I always remind the board right now when you approve this, this is scheduled. If you counted this up, it would be 181 days. Aaron um, and I will insert a professional development day probably in March at some point to get it to be 180 days. But remarkably enough, because of how early we start um, and the, the winter vacation being not extended too long, the last day of school will be June 3rd. And I think that might be an all-time record. If, uh, and if there are no snow days, June 3rd would be interesting. And the one thing I can say that the COVID shutdown um, may have brought us is a rethinking of snow days. So uh, we'll see when we get down the road on that. But it's an interesting calendar. Um, it was sent to all the board members, and we're hoping that it meets with your approval tonight. All right. Can I get a motion on the calendar, please? Move to adopt the 2021-2022 school calendar as presented. A second? Second. Anyone? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Hopefully going back to school so early, you get the payoff with getting out so early and nobody gets too mad at us. <laughs> so, all right, now we are on to information and reports. So, school facilities master plan and reconfiguration study. Um, So, well, am, I, am I moving this to an action item now or later? 
I think we can move it to an act. Well, Katie, you interrupt if you want, but can move it after Neil talks through the uh, mm -hmm. the bit of a presentation he has. Okay. Okay. You want me to go ahead and do it now? Yeah, you go ahead, Neil. Yeah. Okay, great. So certainly the board has had uh, many, many presentations on this topic over the, the last uh, year plus, and we've been at this work for um, 18 months when I looked at the calendar um, earlier today. Um, and I'm really excited about tonight because I'm hoping, um, while this is a long process and will continue to be a long process, that tonight might represent uh, a, a choice uh, for the board and that I would describe as maybe the end of the beginning <laughs> and uh, reaching the, uh, a, a good solid deciding point as we end the 20, uh, 2020 school year. So um, obviously tonight we're gonna, uh, we've talked a lot in recent weeks about sixth grade. We've had the discussion about the best placement for sixth grade through a number of groups, our administrative council, our sixth grade teachers, uh, really important meeting with our curriculum committee, and then last week with the facilities and enrollment task force. And, and almost all of you have seen a presented version of what we've done. So rather than repeat that, tonight, and I know it was forwarded to you last Friday. What we wanted to do was organize tonight around a view of the path we've taken to, to um, I, it'll be a reminder to the board, but maybe for some members of the public to just see how much has gone into this process. So um, what you see here is a slide. I've, I've broken down the work that we've engaged in over the last 18 months into four phases. Um, and the first was the initial part, existing conditions, in which um, we, we selected Tecton as our partner in this work late in 2018, uh, very late in 2018. And their work began just as we transi transitioned into that new year. They went to work with multiple, multiple visits by engineers um, and other technical ex experts to all seven buildings. They provided us with extensive documentation and reports. And then you can see the public meetings that were held related to that, which was a presentation to you in April, uh, a lengthy facilities and enrollment task force meeting in May of that year. And then our first public forum held at the public library where we had pretty good attendance and got some good feedback. And I think generated some public interest um, in the process. All of that first phase, um, was, the, was really the technical side of things, but I think it's really gonna pay off um, in our future um, capital improvement planning because what Jeff Wyszynski has done is really outline um, recently a, a, an excellent document for us that is gonna prioritize what kind of um, work on those, on those schools that are further down in the timeline for long-term improvements, what maintenance work is really prioritized. And he's, set up a nice format um, for us to start to wrap our heads around that work. After uh, we uh, uh, ended that school year, I would say we entered into phase two. What's not shown on this slide is all the work that happened in the summer of 2019 with um, our, our central office team um, working with Tecton, as well as several meetings with our administrative council in which um, initial ideas around what configurations of our school might look like. Um, a, a whole bunch of options were thrown out. Um, and it was, it was really a time when kind of any idea was a good idea. Put it out there, see what kind of reaction um, our, our um, leadership team was getting and came out in the fall using the facilities and enrollment task force as our group that um, took a look at, at, I think our initial presentation, I think we put six options out there for consideration. I was really happy with the two meetings in October with the Facilities and Enrollment Task Force because they were very interactive meetings where we ran them as um, you know, a, a, a way for people to react, put a whole bunch of sticky notes up on um, the, idea, the uh, options that were presented to provide feedback. There was some polling of preferences to try to see what was rising to the surface, and I thought we did a nice job narrowing the options. Um, presented to the Board of Ed in November, 
And I do think we had some exciting ideas for reconfiguration and potential efficiencies. And when we took those to public forum in November 20th, obviously because uh, those options involved a potential closure of Terrafield School many years down the road, um, a lot of, we, we really had to reassess at that point given the community, um, the community's clear expression that it had no appetite for school closures. So I would say as we ended phase two, it was kind of a regroup um, and be able to um, move on to what was a narrowing of options that did not um, talk about a, a school closure. So um, if we go forward to phase three, we actually started, we, we had time before the new year came to meet with the Tariffville Village Association. Um, and a number of us went out to um, the school and had a good conversation with them to talk about options that might involve, that would involve not closing Terrafil School, um, really trying to uh, recover a little bit from our November public forum. And then uh, narrowed it down, of course, to the options of either a fifth and sixth grade school, a, a sixth grade option at Henry James, or keep the existing configuration. And we're able to um, come out of the facilities and enrollment task force and then I would say our most important um, set of meetings in this entire process was all those neighborhood meetings you see listed in February. Um, obviously, we we're still getting tremendous support from Jeff Wojcinski and Tecton, but I feel like that's the phase where the board um, and started to really shape this conversation with the community. Um, and Susan and Jeff uh, in different, uh, different of those meetings uh, took the lead to respond to co the community. Um, and I thought we just had excellent conversations, um, really tremendous conversations. What's not on the slide is that simultaneously we were doing the survey that um, gave us even wider feedback about what people's opinions on the, uh, the configuration possibilities were. And then you can see the two meetings at the bottom of phase three in back-to-back uh, -to -back nights, we had a board meeting and then a facilities and enrollment task force. And that's where um, the decision was made that the fifth and sixth grade option simply didn't have the support to go forward. Um, and, and also a strong stance by the board that status quo of just doing maintenance projects on the typical six years CIP was not gonna address mm -hmm. the significant needs of our aging elementary school buildings. And therefore that we narrowed the, the, the narrowing of options ended up really um, becoming a question of where should sixth grade be? Should sixth grade be uh, in the middle school model or should we maintain our current configuration? Um, based on that pretty uh, narrow question, we spent the last couple of months trying to make a good decision about grade six. Started at the public forum on March 4th. Um, I would say like the neighborhood meetings, we had a much better conversation where certainly there were um, people who got up to speak about advantages of sixth grade. There were certainly people um, who spoke about not being in favor of sixth grade going to Henry James. And there's no way to um, skin this cat and please absolutely everybody of how um, uh, this is gonna come be uh, as an outcome, if you will. Um, in, in March, we were able to provide a written update to the board. And then in your April meeting, I um, presented uh, about where we were in the process. A couple more things that um, uh, I wanna note that are not on the slide. What I put on the slide are all the public meetings, but um, it should also be noted that um, as we've talked about, in April, every, all five um, sixth grade teams from all five elementary schools were engaged by Aaron and I in a conversation supporting the notion that educators were talking about of really seeing that sixth grade belonging in toward the middle school, that it fits much more naturally for a lot of reasons in a middle school model. And, you know, certainly the... Uh, other districts we've looked at, we know we're in a significant minority of maintaining a K-6 structure. The, the other um, meeting that was very, very important 
um, for us was on May 4th, we were able to present to the Board of Ed Curriculum Committee. Um, and that uh, involved uh, about half of you. Susan sat in on that as well um, and really helped give us some feedback to shape our presentation to facilities enrollment. So at the end of the day, um, we are now at a, at a place where we do believe that the best first step, as we've been talking about for months now, what's the best first step in the long range um, master plan, um, backed by the survey support that uh, a majority of parents said they would support a sixth grade, an overwhelming majority of educators said they would support sixth grade at the middle school. Certainly, uh, we know that the demographics of um, emptying a grade out of our elementary schools um, helps tremendously with some of the overcrowding issues at our elementary schools. And we've also learned through this process that um, people were excited about the possibility of that also um, potentially spreading preschool to more um, of our schools. But at the end of the day, I think what we've spent the last couple of months doing as our presentation has shown is saying that, yeah, it works. It's got survey support. It works for demographics. You've got some interesting um, other possibilities, but that it's the right educational decision. And I think what Aaron and Scott Baker have done in the presentation that you've all seen in other forums, have been able to see kind of the academic evidence of the unique needs of um, middle school learners. And then also um, the idea in the social, emotional, and developmental um, frameworks that sixth graders in terms of their unique needs are much better uh, addressed in a setting that is about the middle level learner and not about one where um, most of the environment is targeted to very small children. Um, they've really, uh, the, the expression from our sixth grade teachers is that um, while some parents may wanna hold on to them at the elementary school, they are more than ready. And that we heard that for um, from time and time again from our teachers. So certainly, um, we, as shown in our presentation, we know um, the importance of addressing transition needs, and we talked a little bit about that in our presentation. Um, we know that parents want to make sure that they have um, better access to, to teachers at the middle school, that sixth grade, um, the feeling that they have better access to teachers in the elementary school. We've got to replicate that at the middle school. Um, and questions remain um, about busing and scheduling and recess, and we tried to address those in our presentation. We acknowledge that those exist. We, we don't think any of those should be a driving factor in, in an ultimate decision because there's plenty of time to figure that stuff out. We can make good decisions about all of those factors, um, but really feel that the, the right move forward would be to support sixth grade to Henry James while addressing the most significantly needed uh, elementary school in Latimer Lane as the top priorities um, in the in the long range master plan. So um, that's how I wanted to frame tonight's conversation, knowing that you um, might want to just ask questions. So I'll stop there and let you guys at it. So I open the floor to anybody who wants to have discussion around this. Hey, Susan, I'll, I'll jump in. It's, it's Jeff, obviously. Just, just wanted to um, say, you know, we, as Neil pointed out, just a, just a quick summary. You know, there's been over 20 meetings of this, two surveys, countless meetings with teachers and staff and principals. Um, we, we took to heart uh, very seriously the community um, request requirement, call it whatever you want, to really get engagement and involvement from all parties. And I think, uh, it, you know, if nothing else, that's what we got. And did uh, did emotions get heated sometimes? Absolutely. And you know what? They should have. These are this is these are big issues. Big, you know. And um, so, but it, 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 I think it's another example why this is a great community. We, you know, again. Not everybody agreed, but we've we've had a heck of a productive conversation uh, with all parties on this. So, just really, uh, 
you know, we'll have a motion before us, but just want to thank the, the team here, uh, the teachers, the staff, and really the community for a, a really productive conversation with, with this issue. Couldn't agree with you more, Jeff. It has really been such a community effort and the involvement from all sides has been um, really something to watch to see everybody, agreement or disagreement, come forward. Is there anybody else who would like to comment? All right, then I would need a motion to amend the agenda to move the facilities master plan to an action item, please. I'll make a motion to amend the agenda to make this item an action item. I will second that motion. Okay. Um, that being said, we would then need a motion uh, to move the long range plan forward. Um, do we have particular wording we need to follow, Katie? There we, there we go. I'll do it. I'll move that the Board of Education direct Tecton Architects to complete the long range facilities master plan for the Simsbury Public Schools by prioritizing the option of a sixth grade addition to Henry James and a renovated new project at Latimer Lane as the first capital improvement project in the timeline. I'll second that. Any discussion? I think I just want to, yeah, one other thing that I, I didn't say before was that, I mean, this is a long range plan. This was our mission to do a long range plan mm -hmm. for what's best for our students in this town and best for the future of education in town. So I think that that is what we've done. And as, as we move forward and more parties get involved in this, it, it's a great working document for people to um, have as a foundation for what comes, happens in the future. Agreed. The emphasis here being on long range. So no, no immediate movement and certainly collaboration among the boards in town going forward. Is there anybody else? Yep, this is Sharon. So just for clarity for those listening, then this is just to have Tetron complete the um, planning and then that sits as a document or a plan until we come back together and determine what those next steps would be. Right, and that's something we would work in concert with the Board of Finance and the Board of Selectmen. And, and you know, the, while we would make certain decisions as the Board of Education, we certainly have to work with our fellow boards to move this forward because it is a community project, right. simply a Board of Education project. So this is just a vote to have them complete their piece of it. Exactly. Yeah, to complete this specifically and to kind of move it along. Move the process this, along. Is, this is, as Neil said, our next first step, if you will. Right. And the, the Board of Finance has requested a summer meeting that we're trying to schedule to have tech done and administrative administration come forward and talk about this first step so that they can begin to look at modeling and talk about timing and, and all those things that we know will be very important conversations. And we'll have board members at that too. Yes, Matt? Correct. Great. Yep. Great. Anything else before we vote? This is Lydia. I applaud uh, Jeff for your leadership with this, uh, with this task force and, and those that were on your team, um, as you had mentioned. And, and uh, this was very uh, concise and, and complete over the 20 plus meetings or a year and a half or so that, uh, that you've met. So um, this, is, this, is, this is really a, a um, great, uh, great um, long range plan that we're moving forward for this district and for the community. And uh, I think it's a very exciting plan that we all look forward to, uh, to the next first step. Thank you. First, next step. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Um, all right, so now it's time to vote. So all those in favor, signify by saying aye, please. Aye. 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 And I will add that Brian Watson, who could not attend our meeting tonight, did uh, reach out to me to let me know that he is also in favor of the plan moving forward, as stated here. So that makes us a unanimous decision, which I always appreciate because it's important that we're all working on the same page. Um, so with that, the motion carries.
and we are on to proposed textbooks. All right. Uh, so I have every spring there's uh, whether they're textbooks or literary texts that come forward to the Board of Education. Uh, they've gone through, obviously, the department supervisor, committee, staff members uh, that take a look at it and uh, obviously onto the building principal in the central office. So uh, this spring, um, right now, tonight, I have uh, one text, a literary text titled Born a Crime, uh, written by Trevor Noah. It's intended for our English 12 level two um, course and um, very uh, timely in regard to, uh, they'll be using it right at the opening of school. Um, the story is certainly about where Noah explores the prejudice that was present in South Africa or president in South Africa and recounts how he was able to overcome that adversity. Um, so not only does it introduce um, the memoir, not only introduces a nonfiction book to the World Lit course, but does provide a nice link between the books and the curriculum and the first formal writing assignment that kids have, which is a personal essay um, in English 12. So we will take, we'll come back to this at our next board meeting for a vote. Um, and in the meantime, you can certainly take a look um, at the, the book and the, the, the write-up behind it, um, and we'll vote at the next board meeting. Erin, I was, I was very excited to see this on the list because I read this book and I thought it was excellent. Great. Good to hear. Thank you. Uh, on, on a lot of different levels. I, I learned a lot from it, and it was just well-written, and uh, it, was, uh, it was a great book, and I think uh, it, will, it will fit into the curriculum very well. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I, I'm with I'm with you completely on that, Todd. So well, it's very exciting because I I thought so, same thing when I saw Trevor Noah's Trevor Noah's name, but people mm -hmm. would definitely be on board with that. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest if if folks haven't read it or listened to it through Audible, that you um, that you do so, and I think you'll enjoy it as well. It's it's great to listen to because Trevor reads it. Trevor reads it. Yeah, he does. So it makes it That's, really interesting. Yeah. Thank you for the comments. I'm going to make this one of my um, books for the summer to read or listen to. Absolutely. So this is uh, this is exciting. Gives me some inspiration. <laughs> Thank you. So, Erin, I have one question though. So this is great for English 12. I just didn't know how. I mean. Do we make selections like this for the lower grades as well? I mean, I know it's for level two, but. We do, we we do. Um, I have another text that's not going to be introduced um, into eighth grade um, with our English social studies um, program. We'll do that next uh, winter um, to look at their text. But when we, when we introduce new texts into a major course, we, we do um, bring them to the Board of Ed for a vote, yes. Okay. And then what about for the um, elementary school, for the little ones? Um, those are not, um, we do those through the principals and we look at those, but those are, they're available for board of members to look at, um, certainly, but we, we typically do not bring the elementary because there's just a wealth of texts that come through because of the levels of reading levels available to students, but they're very well vetted through um, obviously under the direction of uh, Betsy Gonzalez and the elementary principals, language arts consultants, and teacher teams. Okay. And librarians. And librarians. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And are we doing the second book, Erin? No, I don't think. The exhibit or no? No, it's not. I'm going to hold on that. I believe it can I, I think if we go to the next slide, it's not there. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. <laughs> and was, was Todd volunteering to be the uh, substitute teacher on this book? That's, I thought I heard that. I just wanted to make sure. Since he, I, 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 I wish I could do it justice. But, uh, I will write that I'd down in my notes. <laughs> I, I just thought I heard something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I think Todd wants to grade the essays. <laughs> I'd love to read the essays. Yeah, me too. All right, uh, so now review of purchasing policy revisions. All right, big night for me. I have a lot of items here. So um, normally um, 
our policy committee would convene in March to review all of the policy changes that might be necessary due to um, uh, legislation that had been passed the year before or other issues that have um, come up. And, you know, I would say on average, we bring six to seven policies forward each year. Um, literally, uh, probably days before I was going to start searching for dates for the um, policy committee, we we hit COVID-19 shutdowns. So um, I, I reconvened with um, Katie Wild, who helps a lot on the policy process, and Aaron Murray. Um, and I said, what what can wait till next year or next fall? Um, and what has to go forward now? And this is the only um, set of policies that we determined needed to go forward now. And it, you'll note from the um, verbiage at the bottom, it's because this has been an item that the auditors have um, hit us on for the past couple of uh, times that our audit has happened. And it's about updating our purchasing policies to be in line with federal guidelines. So it's a number of technical changes to these policies. Um, Thank you to Amy Merriweather, who made those technical changes to the policies. Um, following what had happened by the town's uh, side of things last year, where they took care of these purchasing policies. Um, and what I did was simply facilitate some online conversation with the policy committee to make sure that everybody was okay with the changes. We took a look at them. We did make a few tweaks. And what is being presented to you tonight is the outcome of that um, online work over the last few weeks. If you have any questions about these policies, I am thrilled that Amy is joining us so that she could answer them um, because it's really more in her wheelhouse than mine. All right, throwing that open to anybody who would like to chat with Amy about the policies. Nobody? All right. So what I will also note um, that I had talked to Susan um, about this um, when we were looking at the timelines. Uh, longtime board members, members will note that usually we present this and then we have another meeting and then we vote on it in a third meeting. Um, the bylaws do allow for an emergency um, uh, bypass of that situation. So what we're going to do is simply vote on it at the next meeting. So if anybody does have questions that you don't want to ask now, simply email them to me and Amy, and we'll try to respond the best we can. And like the textbook, this is one you'll vote on two weeks from now. Okay. Anybody? All right, then. So, uh, at this point, our next board meeting is going to be Tuesday, June 9th. We will still be Zooming at that point in time, I believe, per all the executive orders. Um, so we'll look forward to seeing everybody then. Um, without anything further, can I get a motion to adjourn? So move. We'll adjourn. Okay. Well, I think that's enough for a motion in a second. Um, thank you all again for all your hard work. Uh, we really appreciate everything you've been doing to keep us running so well. And uh, we'll talk to you all soon. Thanks. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank, thank you. Night. Bye. Good night.